think the first thing that I purchased was uh, Justin Timberlake. I didn't know how to play, and then the, the faulty wiring kept on electrocuting me. What? Yeah. So like, oh my god. <laughs> I hated it. That shit sucked. I was like kind of a pseudo intellectual, you know, yeah. 14 year old who thinks that they're hella smart. <laughs> Dubs up is very competitive um, because everyone wants to have like, like the coolest, like freshest idea basically. Your music should speak for yourself and that's how you should get bookings and like, um, you shouldn't have to fucking suck some promoter's dick in order to like, uh, have your music heard. Yo, man, I'll check out your CD. And he was like the only person to like actually respond to me. Oh, wow. And I was like, hell yeah, dude. Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Sunday. Yo, what's up? <laughs> so you were born in the Bay Area? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I was born in San Jose. Uh, grew up there and... Uh, your parents are from there as well? No, my parents are actually from Ohio. Oh, yeah. what made them move to San Jose? Um, my dad wanted to be like a, basically like a software engineer, and that's what he went to school for. Mm -hmm. So he moved over, uh, probably I think in like the '80s, and um, pretty much lived in the Bay Area ever since then. Mm -hmm. And um, what does your mom do? She's a school teacher. Oh, yeah. where, where do you get your creative side from? Um, well. I mean, both my parents are low-key kind of hippies, so like when I was growing up, they were always trying to get me to do uh, shit with like, basically like play musical instruments and stuff. Um, you know, they had me do like piano lessons since I was like a kid. Yeah, and guitar. Yeah. Um, I, I like learned guitar and like bass on my own. Um, I tried to play the drums, but drums were like really expensive and it was like, also really hard because I don't have that much coordination in my body. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned how to play guitar, and then I got really good at bass guitar. Oh. But, um, yeah, I think both of my parents, whether they really realize it or not, were definitely encouraging me to do a lot of creative shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they found out I was doing, my mu doing music, um, you know, shouldn't have been so much of a surprise. <laughs> but... What kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? Um, I mean, my dad mostly listened to like, uh, like, old rock, you know, like, um, like early metal and stuff like that. Um, I guess predominantly like Talking Heads or like Led Zeppelin, shit like that. Mm. Um, Do you so like, yeah. That's what he was like into, and so I pretty much grew up on that kind of music. Yeah. Kind of. Do you remember like the first CD you bought? I think I'm not sure if I bought. I don't remember the first CD I bought, but I think the first time I bought music was on like iTunes, mm -hmm. and it was because all my friends were like, like you can listen to music on the internet and buy it and. I, before that, I think when I was like nine, I'd figure out how to like torrent music and shit. LimeWire. Yeah, it was like <laughs> LimeWire and I think I used like torrents.eu when that was still a thing. I think that was what it was called. But anyway, um, I was like a little kid and you know, I don't remember the last, what the first piece of music that I illegally downloaded or purchased was. But I think the first thing that I purchased was uh, Justin Timberlake. And then you were in like so many bands, right? Like metal bands, jazz bands. Yeah, I did a lot of a lot of stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, was that like through your school or? Uh, yeah. Some of them were through my school. Like the metal bands were through uh, just like my friends and stuff. But in school, um, I did marching band like my first year of high school and. I hated it because basically like that was one the first time like I kind of knew how to play a guitar and I signed up to do like a like in the percussion pit like mm. part of the percussion ensemble or whatever and um, they were like okay you can you can play guitar so how about you play bass guitar right and I was like okay I'm sure I can figure that out yeah you know? Um...
And so I kind of sucked at it for like the first month and I didn't really know what to do. And also like the equipment they had set up was like, had like a bunch of faulty wiring. Oh. So basically when I go up, I, I go up in front and I'd be like the loudest instrument because I had this giant bass amp. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know how to play. And then the, the faulty wiring kept on electrocuting me. What? So, yeah. So like, oh my God. <laughs> I hated it. That shit sucked. But, um, and then, and then everyone would yell at me whenever I get electrocuted. And I was like, <laughs> what? guys, fuck off. So yeah. Well, I, I oh was my not gosh. Marching band any longer. <laughs> but, um, you know, my, my school had like a, like a decent music program. They tried, you know. Jasmine was cool. I did like, um, well, actually no. Jasmine for my school, that one sucked too. <laughs> so basically, um, when I, like the, my last two years of high school, I signed up to play bass again in the jazz band. The, my jazz instructor was like, hey, why don't you come play for my band and we'll pay you money, right? And then I did that for like maybe like six months or something. And uh, he's kind of a dick. So I kind of like <laughs> flipped out on him and I quit that band and then I quit the one from school. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was a little empowering, you know, <laughs> but still, yeah, that kind of sucked too. Did he like school growing up? I was kind of a bitch, so I was bullied a lot. So I'm not really sure if I liked it that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, for the most part, like where I was raised, like you had to be like really school was like super, super competitive. Yeah. And um, it basically took over like every asset of your life. And I didn't realize until I dropped out of school that like how much I really didn't like it. Oh wow. Yeah. Did you like any specific subjects at all or? Um, probably like, I mean I, like, I've always liked various sciences um, and I guess math. Oh. I used to think that I was like really good at literature and stuff and like yeah. writing. And then like I recently looked back on stuff that I wrote in like my lit classes or like essays that I've written and they're like really, really cringy. Because I, I was like kind of a pseudo intellectual, you know, yeah. 14 year old who thinks that they're hella smart. <laughs> but wasn't. But it came easy to you, like math and science? Uh no. Definitely oh. not easy, yeah. <laughs> but there's like kind of like a actual um, tangible gratification, you know, mm. when you're like, I completed this math problem for homework, yeah. you know, and it's like, okay, way to go. <laughs> um, so that, I think that was like the thing that I enjoyed about it. But, mm -hmm. Did the uh, bullying like take a toll on you, like you didn't want to go to school or, or it wasn't that big? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really have any like friends when I first started going to my high school because I didn't know anybody. So I definitely didn't want to go to school for a long time. But, and I definitely like called out sick probably way more than I should have. Mm -hmm. um, and your parents knew? I don't think they knew. I definitely lied to them. Oh. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't really like take that big of a toll on me. Mm -hmm. I kind of like had my own um, coming or, or like I kind of like uh, came back around with the whole bowling thing and uh, had my moments where it was like I like got in my bully's faces you know and shit and like it, you know it worked itself out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went to San Francisco State and it was fucking expensive and I didn't learn shit. What were you on track to study? Well, originally I was, because I didn't know what I was doing, I was like, I'm gonna go to school for business. And I took like, econ classes for a bit. And like, I didn't learn shit. And I just felt like I was wasting my money. Then I started going to school for, uh, I dropped out and I went to community college. So I was trying to become like a, uh, programmer 
Oh, so kind of like your dad. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was learning from. Like, I didn't really learn shit in school either. I learned most of my shit from my dad anyway. So Was he kind of like edging you to be, to do computer science? No, but I think that my dad was definitely always supportive of me doing kind of like whatever nonsense I wanted to, you know, like mm -hmm. the music thing. Um, my mom was definitely like, you need to get a real job and figure out your life mm -hmm. kind of deal. Yeah. But uh, so, so she you, was encouraging yeah. me to do that. But I also enjoyed it. At that point, you could see yourself in a career of programming. Yeah, more than anything else, um, just because I like the whole problem solving thing and um, it's a lot of programming is kind of comparable to do, like working on music so oh, that's what yeah. I was used to at that point so when I started learning I was like oh this is I started comparing all the similarities it had to like working in Ableton for example were you going by a different moniker before than death yeah I had like a couple and they're all terrible <laughs> what kind of music were those like sounding like um it was like house, I guess, and then I tried to do like um, more like beat oriented stuff, um, a little bit of like indie shit. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I don't know, I just did a bunch of random shit until I kind of like rediscovered dubstep again, because that was like one of the biggest reasons that I started getting into electronic music and started going to shows and stuff when I was a lot younger. What I wanted to make back then was like Electro House and like Complex Drone and shit like that. Oh. Or like stuff like, like when I first started, I wanted to make stuff like Mord Fustang or like um, Feed Me. That's mm -hmm. what I was like trying to do. Yeah. And then how, like what artists made you like re-get into dubstep? Um, I mean, there's a lot. Probably predominantly... Um, Faizo, uh, I think when I first started hearing his shit, I was like, holy fuck, like, this is really different sounding and, like, really heavier. Um, and then, like, Samplifier, Uber, uh, Getter, Must Die. There's a lot of people that I could, like, kind of name as Space Laces, 100%. Um, but... What really inspired me was like the more underground shit, like Fizo and Samplifier, because mm -hmm. uh, it was super complex and uh, like rhythmically different, I guess. And like the sound design was like super fresh to me, because like they were using a lot of sound design techniques that a lot of people weren't. Oh. In dubstep. Especially when dubstep took like a big dip in popularity and during like kind of like the bro step era where obviously there's a lot of artists that were doing really well and did sound different but um there's a lot of especially underground artists that literally just were using like serum presets and fucking like when serum first came out everyone sounded like shit mm -hmm. and um then people started learning how to sound different with it. And then, so you dropped out to do music full time or? Yeah, I mean, that was my goal. Um, but I worked, I did like a couple jobs. Um, you didn't like them, right? Yeah, they were terrible. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, there's a certain nostalgia about it, but um, for the most part, they were terrible. Oh, what was it? Um, I did, uh, I worked as, like, a barista for probably, like, four years, mm -hmm. and, or it was, like, three years, and I also was, like, a server, and that job was, like, technically way better, and I kind of made more money, but I was lazy, and the place, like, the coffee shop I worked at was, like, right down the street from my house, so I just, like, walked over there. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. So you were, this was still in San Jose? Or where, where yeah. was This is all in San Jose. Did you move back in with your parents? Or yeah. did you find, yeah. I basically like lived out of their garage and like had like a, like I don't, I don't ever really have that much equipment, um, but I still had my giant bass amp from when I played bass. And uh, 
was like a giant cabinet. And then um, I had uh, these shitty monitors that I still use to produce. <laughs> and um, I basically had those all set up in my garage. And um, I would just basically like have like a bunch of people over all the time and I'd be like working on music and shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, my parents were uh, very tolerant of yeah. me like being really loud and probably drunk <laughs> with like a bunch of random motherfuckers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Did you have some sort of strategy? I mean, you must have no known like one day it would all like work out, right? Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> Definitely didn't know that. But when I started doing dubstep again, I felt like I had more of like a purpose and more of a direction. I was like, I want to get really good at this genre because it's inspiring me. And uh, I feel like I can do it like, I feel like I can do it, you know? And it became more of a challenge because again, like, even though it's like kind of hard to acknowledge, dubstep is very competitive um, because Everyone wants to have like, like the coolest, like freshest idea. Basically, that's the environment that I kind of grew up in. And so, like when I hear people uh, make new shit, I'm like, fuck, I want to make new shit too. Yeah. Not necessarily like, like copy them or like, because that's the thing that, in my opinion, like ruins creativity. Is like when everyone's like, it becomes less competitive. And uh, instead of like people trying to like one up each other and doing something cool and different, it becomes like people trying to one up each other and doing the same shit. Mm. Um, How did you get your music out there initially? Like picking up momentum at the beginning? Well, I mean, I definitely rotted alone <laughs> for a long time. Um, you know, with some of my friends from high school and shit, like, and, uh, like, saw Meme Sound. He, me and him, like, have known each other for a long time. Basically, like, when I first started producing. Um, initially, there, I mean, like, I never had a fucking game plan at all. I just kind of did whatever. Um, but I really tried for the beginning, for like example. Like, sending stuff out to blogs? Uh... I never really did that because um, I never really felt like I had uh, the right contact email, and I felt like it was very rare that they were gonna like actually listen to it. Um, but I guess I started doing that a little bit later, but it never worked out for me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my first idea was I want to. Uh, I want people to like know me in the Bay Area and uh, kind of like get my music out in that way. Um, there's a lot of local DJs there and uh, it's kind of a racket yeah. too. So like it's a lot of like pay for play or like sell oh. tickets and shit. I never really did that shit. Um, I tried being a promoter I think for like a week. <laughs> where I would just have to like hand out flyers and stuff and uh, when it comes to that kind of shit I'm not trying to hate on it like you just have to like think about your end goal I guess which is are you doing it because you want to play shows and be like a DJ for this company or are you just doing it to like get guest lists and like mm. go to a party and stuff and I think that the latter is worth it if that's like what you want to do but if you're trying to be a DJ, um, the thing that people, especially from the Bay Area, what they don't realize is that your music should speak for yourself, and that's how you should get bookings, and like, um, you shouldn't have to fucking suck some promoter's dick in order to like, uh, have your music heard, or like, even play like an opening slot somewhere, mm -hmm. and I don't know. But basically, um, the first thing that I ever did promotion-wise, I remember this very vividly because this is actually the day that I met Somnium Sounds. Um, 
there's like this club in San Francisco, and uh, it had like a, it was like a weekly thing, um, and I was like, I just finished like what I would have considered like an EP, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm gonna hand it out CDs to all these random motherfuckers and see if they like, they'll like my music and shit. And um, I don't think I wrote my name on the CDs or did anything mm -hmm. that would actually benefit me. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I went to this club, and when it ended, I was like handing out CDs, and uh, that like Somnium Sound was sitting there with our other friend Dantel, and he was like, "Yo, man, I'll check out your CD." And he was like the only person to like actually respond to me, oh, wow. and I was like, "Hell yeah, dude!" And so we just started talking because like um, there weren't really that many like actual music producers. So, uh, they're like, oh, for sure, um, listen to your shit, and we started talking about production and stuff, and then they actually listened to my music, and they're like, oh, dude, this is tight, and, um, then we just started, like, hanging out all the time after that, mm -hmm. but that was the only time I ever handed out CDs, and, uh, it worked. I guess something, yeah, because <laughs> that's one of my best friends now, yeah. but, um, That, there's like a probably like three year gap in between that period of time when I handed out CDs at a weekly club in San Francisco to like when I started making dubstep. Um, and uh, the first thing that I did to like kind of get my music out was I kind of noticed that Another thing that really drew me into dubstep, to go on a, a little bit of a, tan a tangent, um, was there's like an actual community, especially for underground dubstep, mm. um, and like people are like really supportive yeah. in general, and that was one of the things that like kind of drew me into it, like mainly because I didn't really feel like any of the other genres really had that kind of like backbone to the community. Um, it was like either like you're a music producer and you're like a house guy and you're huge or like you maybe knew like four other people that would want to talk to you, mm. you know? Um, so were you guys like sharing each other's music? Yeah. So basically like I uh, started like, well, I mean, I started my SoundCloud and at that point in time I had met some other people that like new dubstep or like new people in the dubstep scene and we're all like friends on Facebook and shit and these are all people that were like out of country too that they knew within the first like month um my friends who lived in the Bay Area that were into dubstep shared my stuff with like all these people that were like out of country like or like um you know in the United States and stuff but didn't live in the Bay and uh, I just started like adding them on Facebook and like talking to them and uh, Skyping and shit. Um, one of the first people to like share my music was Uber. And he was like one of the first people to ever like kind of discover me on SoundCloud and stuff. And he's been like one of my best friends for like the past like three years now. Um, how did you meet, like, Slay All and... Well, uh... I met Clint going out, like, like randomly at shows, and, um... Basically, like, you know, we talked, and, you know, we just kind of got along, and then... How long um, ago was that? Uh, it wasn't too long ago, it was within the past, like, year. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I think they noticed, like, my growth within the depths of scene and stuff and we're definitely interested in like helping the project mm -hmm. and like um making it bigger and stuff yeah and how long ago did you move to la uh like almost two and a half years ago oh so you feel like you had to make that move to be more in music here yeah definitely yeah um in the bay area 
again, like, there wasn't really any, oh, Jesus, man, that's a pigeon with his head oh off. Oh my gosh. Why do I see so much weird stuff? I've seen car crash with the sidewalk when I did boombox. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I don't even want to show you guys. YouTube's going to censor it. Yeah. <laughs> that was brutal, man. It's Why like do you point took, that like, out? out of his fucking head. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> there, there wasn't really an opportunity for me to like grow in terms of like playing shows or like meeting new people in LA. Everyone comes over here that's like out of state. Like you'll get to meet like all these people that you've been talking on the internet with for a long mm -hmm. time, and you'll be like, "Yo, put a face to the name," and yeah. shit like that. Whereas in the Bay, like pretty much no one will ever go there unless mm -hmm. there's like a really big show. Yeah. Um, and there's also like no, uh, there wasn't a big underground scene for like mm -hmm. dubstep. Yeah. So there was like only like a couple promoters that would um, that would like actually throw shows mm -hmm. and would book people that had like a thousand SoundCloud followers. Oh or like that. wow! How did you meet? Like never say die. Um. So that's kind of a funny story. I actually met Schism when he played in this club in like Campbell, which is in the Bay, probably like three years ago. And this is before I started making Debset. And uh, I think I opened for him or something, like played like the 8.30 slot, some shit. And uh, I was like, hey man, uh, you should check out my music or something like along those lines and um, I didn't give him any way of like ever contacting me ever <laughs> so you never I, do this you're so mysterious yeah I know it was really dumb <laughs> and uh, and so then I met him again like uh, I think late 2016 something like that and um he had already like had some of my songs and he was like playing them out and I was like what the fuck you know like yeah. I did not expect that and uh, he was like yeah man I'm really stuck in your shit uh, let's you know get some music out and mm -hmm. I've been working with them since then and uh, yeah probably like one of my favorite labels of all time yeah super super cool guys how would you say you've grown as a person since you were younger uh, I mean, I was always like kind of like an anxious wreck. Um, pretty much my entire life. And I'm not sure if that's gone away at all. Um, I definitely have a little bit more confidence now that like I feel like I know what I'm supposed to do with my life, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and not lost and think that everyone hates me and that I'm failing at everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I mean, it all depends, I guess, like, how young you'd say. I feel like, I don't know, I definitely changed a lot in the past, like, ten years. Uh, I definitely used to be a bitch, and I think I still might be a bitch. What do you want to be remembered for? Uh... Making cool music, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's, if there's anything, like, that would pretty much be it. Yeah, I'd be like, that guy made cool music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool, guy. What does success look like to you? Obviously, there's like the, like the end goal, dream of success, living in a fucking fancy house, and being rich and shit like that. You know. Mm -hmm. And. There's a part of me that says, like, that'd be cool, you know? Um, but, I don't know, I, I feel like, I think that's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I couldn't really tell you, like, what my definition of success is because I'm not sure what anybody else's definition of success is either. Because I'm pretty sure that when you say, that, like, Success, that's what everyone thinks of as being rich and flexy and fucking cool. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't know. I mean, 
I don't want to say that I'm like satisfied or like, or like I'm comfortable with where I'm at because I do want to grow as an artist. I want to play bigger shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm like pretty fucking happy where I am, you know. Mm -hmm. So like it's not, and like I have been for like the past like two years, you know, just like actually finding like a community that like I can relate to and stuff, and not feeling like a loser. So. That's, I mean, like, that's pretty much all I wanted anyway. Yeah, I love that. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>